Today I've got a problem from the Greece 2013 IMO team selection test. We want to find all pairs of non-negative integers m and n, satisfying n times n plus 2 over 4 equals m to the 4 plus m squared minus m plus 1. Kind of crazy looking equation, but actually it's not too bad to deal with. We know m and n are non-negative integers. But also, immediately I see the left side has a fraction, the right-hand side doesn't. So this guy is clearly an integer, so the left side better be an integer too. And I notice that n and n plus 2 have the same parity. That means if one of them's odd, the other one's odd. If one of them's even, the other one's even. So that means that n cannot be odd, because if n was odd, we'd have an odd number times an odd number, which is odd. And if I divide that by 4, that's definitely going to be a fraction. So I know n is even, so I can replace it with 2k where k here is some non-negative integer. So it's either a natural number or it's zero. And if I just replace that and kind of simplify this, I get k squared plus k equals m to the 4 plus m squared minus m plus 1. Now I notice I've got like something squared and here's something to the 4. k and then m squared. And this isn't enough. I mean, it's not like super concrete evidence for or justification for the step that I'm about to do. But it does seem kind of nice that that's the square of something, that's the square of m squared, that's something, and that is m squared. Um, that there's something quite nice about that. So that suggests I'll put all of those together and bring the m minus 1 by itself. So I've got m to the 4 minus k squared plus this m squared minus k. And this is actually quite a nice move to do because now this factorizes really, really nicely. So if I look at this thing, that's just the difference of two squares. It's m squared plus k times m squared minus k. Now I've got another m squared minus k here. And so if I put all of that together, I get m squared plus k plus 1 times m squared minus k. And all of this equals m minus 1. Now, here's the thing. If m is bigger than 1, well, this thing here is bigger than zero. Nothing remarkable there. But it is an integer, and it's bigger than zero, so it's a positive integer. So that tells me that each of these things here has to be integers. And, well, clearly this guy here is positive, so this thing here will also have to be positive, since it multiplies to give me something positive. But actually, furthermore, I can make the conclusion here that, well... I've got a positive number equals some positive whole number times some other positive whole number. Well, these are just then factors. So I can therefore conclude that m squared plus k plus 1 is a divisor or divides into m minus 1. But in particular then, that implies that m squared plus k plus 1 is less than or equal to m minus 1. And now this is cl or almost clearly not true at all. Because m is a non-negative integer, so m squared alone is already going to be at least m. And so if I add 1, then I can say that m is certainly strictly less than m squared plus 1. And if I now subtract 1 from both sides, m minus 1 is definitely going to be less than m squared plus 1. And so, and obviously I've got this k as well, so I can even chuck that on there. Why not? Because uh, k is also non-negative. And so this thing here is no way going to be less than or equal to m minus 1. So I get a big fat contradiction. So m cannot be bigger than 1. But m is supposed to be a non-negative integer. So the only hope here of there being a solution is if either m is 0 or if m is 1. Now, we just test those two cases. So if m is 0, what do we get? Well, we get n times n plus 2 over 4 equals 1. So we get n times n plus 2 equals 4. Um, and does this have solutions? Well, you could expand this and get n squared plus 2n minus 4 is 0. But this thing doesn't, I mean, doesn't have any uh, integer solutions for n. So we hit a bit of a dead end. Um, the other thing is then when m is 1, I'll maybe just squeeze this in up here. When m is 1, what does this thing here become? Well, you get n times n plus 2 over 4 equals 1 plus 1 minus 1 plus 1, which is 2. So you get n times n plus 2 is 8. And that just means that n is 2. So we only have one solution to this equation, namely when m is 1 and n is 2. A pretty neat solution here. Um, so just briefly going over this again, we just firstly observe that n has to be even. Then replacing it with 2k, we get this equation, which kind of, if we bring terms to one side, factorizes quite nicely. And then because everything here is an integer, 
we know that this term must be a factor of n minus 1, but it therefore in particular must be smaller than or equal to it. But then that's like a contradiction if m is bigger than 1. So that mean, means we only need to test two cases, which is pretty straightforward to do. Anyway, thanks so much for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Have a great day.